I had a hole in my sock <laughs> earlier and I found it. And I'm like, I bet you if I didn't notice, I'd be like this. And then I'd have my giant gaping hole in my sock. <laughs> and then people would make comments about it. Yeah, they probably would. Unless it was Spotify, then they wouldn't care. Yeah. I'm finding a lot of my socks are getting holes in them lately, too. <laughs> Relevant news. That's what we came to talk about today. So far, I've turned three of my socks pink, and six of them have holes in them, so I think I need to upgrade my socks. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways. Yeah. Um, it's a real family affair today. I feel like I'm leaving. Matt's here, in case that wasn't abundantly clear. I've taken over. Yeah. This is round two. Um, do you want to, do you want to pitch what your whole thing is about here? Well, I don't want to make it sound like I wanted to come on. I want to make it sound like you wanted me to come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really was dying to have Matt on the podcast. <laughs> Actually, you guys too. A lot of people asked for you to come back. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. Well, basically we were having a conversation about, um, just how much, I mean, how much you've changed in general and like especially towards um women and stuff like that uh yeah so basically i was talking to sam about like my views on i don't know if i'm calling it feminism but <laughs> just my views on well i think just the way that you treat and perceive women and stuff like that yeah it's, it's changed quite a bit since first when we first started dating so we were talking about the other night last night that uh Basically, my experiences now and my views and then when we first started dating and then also when I was younger. So that's, I guess, what we're, t- we're touching on because I feel like it's changed quite a bit, especially because when we started dating, you're bringing things to like it's hard for someone to change when no one's challenging them mm-hmm. or pointing things out. And if you are we just going to get a bit into it because then I'm going to start yeah, talking. Go ahead. Okay, because just in that case, like, there's two points that we were talking about was you feeling like women are basically stuck trying to train or, like, um, not train. Well, I feel like the onus is kind of put on women to, like, teach men how to treat them and how to treat women rather than, you know, either men taking that on themselves or parents teaching their kids. Because I think that, like, you know, when I think about the messaging that not necessarily for my parents, but even just like in school and stuff like that. Um, And like conversations around like rape culture and stuff like that. It's always like, well, what were you wearing? What were you doing? Were you drinking kind of thing? And the Mm -hmm. onus becomes on women to like not be raped rather than men to not rape kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that just in, in general, like aside from like assault issues, just like treatment of women is very much that like, well, how did you, how did you aggravate that person? How did you get them to do that to you rather than like, why was he doing that to you in the first place? Why yeah. was he treating you like that in the first place? Yeah. So there's that side of it. And then also I feel like as a man, guy, whatever, um, it's more, it's not really prevalent to like challenge your friends about talking like an idiot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Cause I'm not going to name names or anything, <laughs> but there's times that sometimes my friends say stuff that I don't completely agree with. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to like make more of an effort to, I'm looking at the camera too now, <laughs> to like speak up a bit. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's taking me to get to 34 and like really comfortable with myself and like my friends and stuff for me to start saying stuff now. Obviously, I didn't really understand before too. But, uh, that's that's what I think another challenge of it is. It's just guys don't really call each other out for shit like that. We don't... It's easier for us to just laugh and go, yeah, okay, and then whatever, move on to the next thing. Yeah, well, and I think also, like, we had talked about um, how I think that p- part of the issue is that I, th- I think that people don't want to change or they don't feel like they need to change because I, I would argue that like most men don't identify as being misogynist kind of thing Mm -hmm. um and most people don't identify with being a racist and all that kind of stuff but that doesn't mean that you can't have those tendencies and that you can't unknowingly contribute to that or knowingly contribute to that um but i think that if you're unwilling to address maybe things that you do need to change because you don't want to associate yourself with that kind of ideology basically um 
then you won't change. Mm-hmm. And and I think that like in talking to people about it and stuff like that and calling out friends and stuff like that, it is kind of just like it it is obviously very uncomfortable. Um, but like you said, it's like that's where if no one is challenging you and you're not taking that on yourself or you're not noticing how you're contributing to it yourself, then do they change? So it reminds me of like when you say like men are the worst or something like that. And then every guy's instinct is to be like, well, not me. Whoops. <laughs> not me. And yeah. even some, I was doing that at the beginning when you say that too. And now I don't even like think that you're talking about me. But I also agree with what you're, that's the weird thing too, is instead of me thinking, me being defensive, I'm, I instantly just agree with you. Like all the stuff I've seen, like when we first started dating, I didn't realize the amount of like, um, just annoying guys coming up and talking to you that won't leave you alone and like invade your space all the time or um just put corner you in uncomfortable positions that you really don't have many options to get out and if you try to be like you know get away from me or something then they start calling you names and they get aggressive and then if you don't then you have to sit there and deal with it and get even more uncomfortable like it's like lose lose i think that's the biggest thing that I, i don't know how to again word this stuff but I feel like with races, some obviously some races have a harder opportunity with things, and then there's the white privilege thing, but I also feel like male privilege isn't really talked about that much, but it's so prevalent. Yeah. And I never noticed it too, obviously being a male, until you started pointing this stuff out, and I'm like, yeah, that's actually ridiculous. Like, in my industry, um, in transportation the women that we have in there when I was younger um I've been in like transportation for 15 years so when I was younger and we dealt with women well first of all I feel like the opportunities especially then it's getting a bit better but was like either the women in tr- in transportation were either receptionist data clerk or that was basically it like lower level jobs kind yeah of thing. So there was that. And then also now that there's some women in upper level positions, if they act basically identical how we would act, then they, everyone calls them like that guy misogynist, like in offices I worked in, they get that culture like, oh, she's being a bitch or Mm -hmm. she's whatever. Then they don't, they don't see it as just someone trying to like hold their ground in in a position. Um, I think the thing with like the conversation around privilege too, is that like, it's so often like the argument that I hear is like, well, I had a hard life. Well, I had a, and it's like, that's not necessarily you inherently having privilege doesn't mean that you don't like go through hardship or that you maybe didn't have like a hard childhood or, you know, whatever, like you can also be at a disadvantage in other ways, but yeah, like being male and being a white male in particular, inherently give does give you privilege and i think in a lot of ways that maybe you wouldn't notice because it is just the standard like it is just the norm for you not like you specifically but like everyone you know um so i think that's the thing that's kind of hard and then when you when you see men like talking down to women like that in the workplace and stuff like that it's like it's so easy to look down on women and feel like well you're just being over emotional and you're just being blah 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 but then feel like you're warranted in your reactions to things yeah um and i I think again like it's i i our society in general i feel like does put the onus on women time and time again to like be the ones that are going to be level-headed and be the ones that are going to teach people and be the ones to like suck it up kind of thing whereas like men are allowed to be in my experience, like a lot more explosive and Mm -hmm. reactive and stuff like that. And then not even really have to apologize for it after, regardless if it's in a workplace or not. Um, because it's just like, well, yeah, I was frustrated with you. Yeah. (laughs) So it's warranted. Yeah. Cause like there's, um, another company I was working with and, uh, the owner was a man and then hit the vice president was his daughter. Hmm. And he was just a real piece of work. He was the worst person I've ever had to work with in my entire life. I don't know how his business is even existing as well. Anyways, that's a different story. (laughs) But his daughter, 
it, it, she basically learned he, he it was his only kid so she learned how to behave like that mm. so she was just as bad a little bit not i wouldn't say just as bad but she was bad but i didn't really look pat i didn't care because i knew where she was coming from as who her dad was mm-hmm. so when she like ripped into me and stuff i just was just like yeah i see where this is coming from so it didn't bother me i just didn't like either of them yeah. but i didn't see like oh there's this woman that's b- behaving like this and it's okay for him. But all the employees that worked there, they always complained about her behaving like that. And they didn't say shit about him. Yeah. So, again, it's the that whole, like, standard. I don't understand. But and also, I keep saying the problem, I think, is because no one ever pipes up. Mm-hmm. Even though I, I piped up sometimes to be like, well, look at her dad. What do you expect? Like, yeah. But it's not like I'm sitting there standing up for, like, her behavior. Like, and how do I even approach that? Like, I just feel like... It's such a weird topic because how do I, how do I like, like, do I, I don't feel like, it's such a hard thing for me. Because I don't want to start like being like, even saying feminism, I, I feel like, yeah, the cores of feminism I definitely believe in. But me saying I'm a feminist for some reason doesn't make me uncomfortable. It makes me feel like I'm almost doing like a disservice to it because I'm not out there advocating for it or something. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It's just challenging. And then, again, it's just... I don't know how to approach situations, especially with older guys. Like, some of the older guys I golf with are pretty misogynistic. Yeah. And when they say stupid stuff like that, or, like, not like that, but when they say stupid stuff regarding that, I'll usually just, like, not say anything, and I won't really show an expression. But I don't say, well, that's not right or something because yeah. there's three of them laughing about it. I don't want to be like the squeaky wheel, like being, I don't want to, it's just like, I'm afraid to make up with these guys uncomfortable. Well, really, who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, and I think that's the thing is like, it's almost like, yeah, like you don't want to be the one upsetting the piece kind of thing. But it's like, but is that piece <laughs> like, and, and I think the other thing is that like, I think we all have internalized misogyny to some extent, which like when you talk about how people talked about that um, woman in the workplace and stuff like that, I, I do think a lot of the times, unfortunately, it isn't conscious. Like it is just people having that internalized misogyny, like thinking that she shouldn't be behaving that way or she's being unprofessional when they maybe wouldn't feel the same way about the guy. Um, and they're just not even noticing that they feel that way or that they have that kind of default for women. Um, but I don't know like it it is it is a difficult thing obviously to like call people out for things but at the same time it's kind of like again going back to growth then do they ever change and do they ever like make a difference with that because I, I think such a huge issue is that when we have so many men that like don't identify as being or they don't understand how they contribute to it mm. they can justify all of their actions kind of thing and then they think that Um, when they hear these stories about like, you know, women being cornered or being made uncomfortable by men or whatever kind of thing, they, they think that that's the outlier. Like they think that that's the person that's like so uncommon. They're like, well, I'm not, oh Jesus, like I'm not like him and I don't agree with what he does, but it's like, but you don't notice when you're doing that. Yeah. And it reminded me of, um, I might've talked about this on the podcast before. I can't remember. I've probably told you, but, um, a friend of a friend of mine was like really into like the game thing, which is like a it's like a pickup it's, it's a book i remember you telling me this story but it's like uh he's like a pickup artist yeah i think i think it's a book that was written originally by like a pickup artist so it's like all about like f- to my understanding like growing your confidence as a guy and and being kind of like unrelenting and like trying to pick up women and so this friend of a friend was telling me about it and he was explaining like you know what he does and and how he picks up women And he was saying like, you know, but, and I was like, this is like so uncomfortable (laughs) to even hear about, let alone Mm -hmm. like, I can't even imagine how uncomfortable you must make women sometimes. Um, And he was like, they're not uncomfortable. Like they, they laugh at my jokes and they blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, but I, I also laugh at jokes when people corner me on a fucking subway because like, I would sooner do that than risk potentially getting hurt or, you know, having, because men are allowed to be so reactive, you know, me me potentially turning someone down could result in something really bad and if i'm by myself especially 
then even more so I'm not going to give you I'm going to be probably a little bit more responsive I'm going to be friendly I'm going to laugh at your jokes I'm going to be kind to you because like I don't want something to happen to me just because I stood my ground you know what I mean and so but that guy he doesn't think he's like a bad guy obviously like he thinks he's not doing anything wrong because he doesn't understand what it's like to be in that position and I remember having a conversation with you about that as well where you're like well I would step in like I would say something but it's like but would you even notice that that woman was uncomfortable like would you would you recognize when a situation was happening that wasn't appropriate or would you be like oh good for him like he's you know yeah I guess I wouldn't even really know the difference yeah when I started hearing those stories is when I started I guess being more empathetic towards um women and like that that was the first time that i've actually tried to be like in um a woman's position if i get in a situation as a guy or i'm in something like that i can easily just be aggressive yeah and that's worked for me in the past yeah so if you don't have that option then for me that feels like oh shit like that's scary and not only do you oftentimes not have that option but also like i i feel pretty confident that no one's gonna help me (laughs) Yeah. Like I, 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 and, and just like in interactions that I've actually had where no one's helped me and no one stepped in because people are unwilling to step up and say something because they don't want to like disturb the peace, so to speak, because like, you know, they don't even recognize that there's an issue or that like I'm being made to feel uncomfortable or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, time and again, like there hasn't been people stepping in. So I don't want to assume that that's going to happen if I, and and choose to be confrontational or just even non-responsive kind of thing um because that's for a while like when I first moved to Vancouver I was taking transit all the time and I wasn't really used to that because um we just our transit was like abysmal where I I grew up um and so I was taking transit all the time and by myself for the kind of like the first time um and my my initial approach when people would come up to me was like I just would pretend that I couldn't hear them like that I had my headphones in or whatever like I I would not listen to them and not respond to them but that also doesn't work it's not like they they would just be like oh she can't hear me so I'm gonna leave her alone it's like they would like take my earphone out or you know like try and get my attention some other way like where it's like I couldn't ignore them Mm -hmm. um and so it's just like that feeling of kind of being like so trapped in that situation is so scary because you don't have an out and you aren't necessarily trusting that other people are going to step in on your behalf either yeah and that also reminds me of a lot of situations especially when we were living downtown um that you would come and tell me when you're by yourself and 110 percent, if i was there didn't these situations never happen Mm -hmm. so which i think which i think also lends to like men thinking that these situations are like the outliers of the world like where they can't be that common because like I don't see them that often but it's like the only thing that you know I shouldn't say the only thing but like one of the things that can deter men is another able-bodied man yeah (laughs) so you know they're they're not as likely to happen it's almost like nature well I think it's just like you know like that guy that kicked my car when he walked past and stuff like that like that probably wouldn't have happened if you were driving or if you were in the passenger seat or whatever because he would see you and be like oh i'm not gonna fuck with that like Mm -hmm. you know whereas i'm probably not going to do anything and on top of that we live in canada it's not like i have a fucking gun yeah (laughs) like you know there's like no like real risk there for him so but it it, i just don't think it happens as often either when but but again even if you if that happened to me i'm not even gonna say on the podcast what would happen but it makes me mad just thinking about someone doing that but if you if you're a woman and you're in the same position and you act the same way i would act then it's like you're completely off like out of left field yeah like so what choices do you have in those situations basically just sit there and take it well and that's the thing too like um i remember when all the harvey weinstein stuff was coming out um and i was having like a discussion with a family member about that where they were like well you know i mean they they didn't speak up and then that resulted in other women being you know um assaulted and stuff like that and and you know like they they have to be willing to do that but it's like but but one it shouldn't be happening anyways two the onus isn't on other women to come forward to save other women like i think that that's like yeah a a a romanticized way of looking at it but ultimately it shouldn't be happening anyways and it's still 
it's still his fault. Like it's mm-hmm. still the man's fault. And, and, and I don't think other victims should be at fault for that. And when you do look at like workplaces and stuff like that, if you're the woman that's constantly outspoken, that's constantly, you know, being like, this guy is being inappropriate to me. I don't like how he talks to me. I don't like how he touches me. He like, you know, talks down to me, blah, blah, blah. Like if you're being that person consistently and you're standing up for yourself, you're going to be seen as the woman that's like difficult in the office. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, you probably won't already. You probably weren't going to get the same opportunities, but even more so if you're seen as like that squeaky wheel mm-hmm. that won't just like shut up about it, that cycle just continues and continues and continues. But then when something does go wrong, like that situation with like all the women with Harvey Weinstein, then it's so easy to turn back and be like, well, why didn't you say something? Mm-hmm. It's like, but why would I? Like, why would I say something when that wouldn't have resulted in a positive outcome anyways? It's not like people would like jump to my rescue and be like, well, that's completely fucking inappropriate and we should get rid of this guy and stop hiring him. Like, it would be the same thing, only I would be berated <laughs> for stepping forward about it. But the, what options do you have? The option is, oh, I'll make sure that you have no career in Hollywood, which is your dream you're trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. or do whatever the hell he was making them do yeah so yeah i don't know it's when i think of the whole situation i i mean i don't want to sound like depressing or something but to me it's like i feel like it's helpless in the situation and i feel helpless for women Mm -hmm. it's like what are you supposed to do then and then even if like the careers that you guys can actually like do something with is still see negatively like so you when you said that you're talking to guys before we started dating saying your social media and they'd be like get a real job well first of all it's already hard enough to have any opportunity and now you guys have finally found like something where you can there's more of an opportunity for social media now so you've actually kind of spilt this industry up a lot more and then now you're still getting shit on for it like what like yeah like female dominated industries are often kind of like looked down upon I know, it's like, ridiculous. Even even before I was, I mean, being an influencer is like a whole other fucking issue. But like, even when I was like just a makeup artist, um, people would be like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, well, I work in an office, so I have like a real job and you're like a makeup artist and that's like fine. But, you know, like you can do that for now. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. Like, I think that <sighs> I, I agree, like it is depressing and I, I do sometimes like feel like hopeless about it as well. And like one of the worst I don't know why this was like such a bad experience for me, but um, I might have talked about this on the podcast too, but like I got into like a fender bender where like we were all fine. Um, Basically, like I was like sliding, hit the guy in front of me and then the guy rolled forward and hit the guy in front of him. And then there was a fourth guy in the back that had nothing to fucking do with anything, completely uninvolved, didn't hit any of our cars, but he was the one to kind of like he like came to all of our windows and was like, okay guys, let's pull off to the left and let's like blah, blah, blah. So when we had all pulled over, um, at first that guy from behind me was trying to say that I didn't even hit the car in front of me, um, which I was pretty sure I had because like, it, it felt like it, like it felt like something had happened obviously. Um, but my, I feel like it's like worth explaining. My car has like an auto brake um, thing where like if it senses that you're about to hit a car, it will brake for you and it's quite like jarring. So sometimes it can feel almost like you hit something, but you didn't actually. Um, but, but this was different. Like I could tell that like I had probably hit this guy. Um, so anyways, he was like trying to like argue with these other people that I hadn't hit him. And at the same time, like I was trying to exchange information with these two other guys. Um, and then he kept coming to me being like, um, let me, let me take down your phone number. Like, let me take down your phone number. And I was like, for, for what? I'm like, did I, did you hit my car? Like, did I hit your car? Like, did something happen? Like, and he was like, no, no, no. But just like, you know, I, I, I think he like worked somehow in a, like a somewhat relevant field or something like that. And he was like, no, 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 I can just, you know, whatever. And he just like kept trying to get me to take his number down or give me his or give him my number. Um, and then after like this back and forth for like 10 or 15 minutes of this, where I'm just trying to like get everything solved with the other two guys, he had... <laughs> again asked me for it and I was like I don't I don't need your number you don't need my number like this doesn't need to like be a thing kind of thing and I was like snippy with him about it because I was just frustrated and I felt like what a weird fucking position for you to like try and take advantage of like 
me being in like a vulnerable spot Mm -hmm. and probably like you know i mean even if it's like a minor thing a lot of the times like if you hit someone's fucking car like it's you're shaken up about it yeah um and and then when i said i you don't need my number he was like well this wouldn't have happened if you weren't on your phone and i was like fuck off like this is just so first of all you weren't in my fucking car secondly like you if you genuinely thought that i was on my phone why would you sit here and be advocating for me all the way up until i refuse to give you my number and then suddenly like you have a completely different story of events yeah and then he was like oh yeah you did hit his car like i see i see like your license plate is chipped and blah 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 like and then like completely changed tunes which like made me feel even like grosser about it because i'm just like you know like this is so so like disgusting that like Mm -hmm. now because again like you're in a position of privilege you can be reactive like this because I said I don't need your fucking number and you don't need mine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can be reactive like this and that could result in like actual like legal issues for me. Mm -hmm. Like if he called in and claimed that I was on my phone and stuff like that, that's like a, that's a big issue. That's not something that like is just going to be like, well, that's fine. You know, like whatever, like, you know, like they might just take your word for it and then, and then what, you know, like it just was such a like uncomfortable position and like my parents were traveling right then and I, called my mom and I was like sobbing about it. And I was just like, I just, I hate this. Like, I hate that this is what it's like being a woman. And this is like, what's so common. And, and I hate the idea of like having a daughter and, and this being like what she has to go through and, and me just having to be like, yeah, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, because really, what do you fucking say about it? Like, of course, yeah, like we should be fighting this and arguing it where we can and trying to like inform people about these things. But at the same time, it's just kind of like to some extent, like you you do just have to accept that this does happen, not accept it, but like recognize that it does happen. And that's probably going to be something that, you know, if we do have a daughter, that is going to be something she's going to deal with. And I I, like I hate knowing that Mm -hmm. (laughs) and just feeling like there's nothing I can do to stop that from being the case yeah i don't know i just it's just that whole f- male fragility that just is like so disgusting to me too mm-hmm. it's it's amazing like how fast just because you hurt their feelings that they like f- completely like flip a switch but that's exactly it it's like so i can sit here and be made to feel uncomfortable by you and that's fine but the second that i reject you and that makes you upset then you can react however you want to react but like it's inappropriate for me to get snippy with you and be like you don't need my number like that that oh my god it's just so like frustrating to me i can't remember um i i think it was when i was like 18 or something and again i was like on the sky train and um some guy was like pestering me like trying to get me to talk to him and he was like, you're not going to talk to me. Like, you're not going to talk to me. And I was like, I don't owe you a response. And he was like, you don't owe me a response. Like I'm talking to you. And I was like, I don't care. Like yeah. it doesn't, I, I don't owe you a response. I don't fucking know you. You're not like anybody to me. Like, I don't need to give you, or, like, I don't owe you fucking anything just because I'm standing here and you're talking to me. Like that may come across as rude to you, but like, again, I don't know how you're going to fucking react to me or, or what's going to change if I do start talking to you, because then if I start talking to you and I'm being kind to you, then I'm leading you on. If I start talking to you and I'm being rude to you, then I'm being a bitch. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there is no, and if I don't talk to you, that's also not an option because then you feel like I'm being an asshole because I'm not giving you the time of day when like, you're not owed that inherently. And why do you feel like you are? It's just like, pick the cues of the room, these fucking guys. Yeah. Like if I ever started talking to some girls, which I rarely went up to a girl to talk to anyways, but, say i was somewhere and i did and i even got a small vibe that she wasn't interested then i just be okay talk to you later yeah or see not talk to you later i guess (laughs) okay talk to you later i'll come back (laughs) (laughs) so it's just weird it's just weird i don't know where that all stems from but do you feel like you were always that way or do you feel like you're more well now you better not be talking to anybody but but do you feel like you're more that way now kind of thing no i felt like i was always that way i'm i think um, my misogyny came out in different ways um, because I didn't like being in uncomfortable situations. So if there's a girl I felt didn't like what I like, didn't want to talk to me, then I'm already uncomfortable. So I just don't want to be in the situation. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that sometimes like when people are confronted with situations like where like they maybe weren't being respectful or they weren't treating women properly or whatever, um, their reaction is 
rather than being like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, I would never try to, I would never be trying to make you feel that way, whatever. Like, I think their reaction is more so to be defensive and, like, aggravated. Like, why would you think that about me? Because, like, obviously that wasn't my intention sort of thing. Um, but then come off even more aggressive in that. Oh, yeah, 100% then. That's what I did, too. Yeah. I don't, I would never, like, stop and, like, see my point in it. I would just try to get out of that conversation and then obviously not talk to him again. Yeah. But I wouldn't apologize. I would just be like, like you would think they were in the wrong. For um, you out. I think deep down I thought they were right, but I didn't want to admit it. It's just like you're saying. Yeah. So then I would I wouldn't get aggressive with them, but I would be a little defensive, and then I just stopped talking to them. Yeah. It didn't happen that often, but and that's another thing. I I, th- I can only think of one time I've ever been like really confronted about being, like making someone uncomfortable. Mm. So if that's not a common thing, then I'll, I'll obviously have this like notion that I'm that's not me too because I never no one ever like says anything. Yeah. I think the biggest issue like we keep bringing up is just no one talks about it. So how is anything ever going to change? Yeah. And again, the only reason I feel like I've changed is just because um, obviously I care about you, and then when you tell me stories like when you were younger and stuff, it makes me upset. Yeah. And then, all, like, when that guy kicked your car, we were dating, and then that made me mad. And then when you said, like, well, well, that wouldn't happen if you were in the car. And I'm like, yeah, actually, that's a good point. That's bullshit. Like, it's just, I don't know. This is going to be depressing for women listening to this. <laughs> I'm not helping. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I mean, I think a lot of women are just like, yep, <laughs> that's how it is. Like, it's not, um, I mean, yeah, it is depressing. But, like, it's it's also just, it it is the experience of being a woman it's very hard i have a lot of uh empathy and what's the other word compassion yeah and it's just like god i I don't think well i'd have to deal with it if i was a woman but it's like i don't want to be in those situations yeah but i think that's i think that's a huge issue too is that when guys do hear about this they either like think that that's the outlier or they put themselves in their shoes but only from the perspective of like the only perspective you have which is your own and so it's so easy to when you hear those things be like well you should have said this well you should have done this well you should have you should have gotten out of the car and you should have argued like you know like because that's what you would do and you would feel comfortable doing that probably and Mm -hmm. and and it probably wouldn't result in much like you you might have like an altercation or whatever but not anything that's going to be like life-threatening or that you would feel is going to be life-threatening most of the time and this is not to say that, like, obviously, like, assault of, like, men d- does happen. Um, but, you know, like, just kind of, like, inherently so with with women, you know, I, I, I do feel like if I'm going to confront this person, I know that I'm accepting, like, a, a pretty huge risk, like, and a, and a pretty large chance of that happening. Yeah. I, I, th- I do think that there should be more... Um, responsibility on like parents and stuff like that to talk to their kids about this like I feel like for some reason um, well and I think that part of it is that parents don't want to believe that their kid would be like that and maybe they haven't like confronted their own the the way that that they contribute as well to things like this Um, but it's like you don't want to assume that like your kid's a shitty person but like you can be a a good person and still have mm-hmm. these things internalized because that's just the nature of our society um mm-hmm. and so i feel like it's very like hush hush and it's not something that's like talked about that much and and i feel like that's what i will want to do differently with like raising our kids is like make sure you know they know the onus isn't on women to protect themselves it's on you to number one step in when you see things but also not be aggressive towards people and not be dismissive and not speak over women and not like, you know, because if you're not, if you're not calling those things out and you're not making people notice and making people aware, then they just will keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll feel like, well, I've gone my whole life never being called out about this. So obviously I'm not fucking, obviously this isn't actually an issue when it's just like, but you know, who who is going to call you out really? Yeah, I feel like our generation has become really progressive and in terms of like racism and bullying and whatever other issues I haven't thought of. We're not from the same generation, just so everyone's clear. We're pretty close. <laughs> so, like, in terms of me worrying about bullying, because I really hate bullying too, 
I feel like our young parents are all really aware of it now and, and they're really trying to pass down to their kids not to do that. And same with racism and acceptance and all, of all lifestyles and all that stuff. But I feel like with this topic, it's not even... Like, I had a high... When we were talking about this, I was thinking, oh, I have a high hope, really, of all the young parents out there because of all these things. But then I'm like, well, no one... I still have my friends and other people that are young and that still behave like that. And this isn't even really talked about. So how... Yeah, we can... I don't know. I feel so helpless about it. Yeah. Well, and I think the issue, too, like, is in part... Men aside women have internalized misogyny as well Mm -hmm. and so you know the same reaction that you or like people in like your workplace had to women and stuff like that a lot of the times like that was my gut reaction growing up as well where i'd be like oh my god this chick is such a bitch whereas like with a guy like i wouldn't i wouldn't jump to that like i wouldn't be like oh this guy's a fucking bitch like i would just be like oh he's just he's mad like he's stern whatever kind of thing yeah like i would have different you know ways of describing them in my mind just naturally and it's not like my parents taught me to be misogynistic or anything like that mm-hmm. obviously but like it, it it is just like this internalized thing and then when you get into like high school and stuff like that and how we talk down about women around us and this idea of like well if I if I make her look less desirable and I talk down about her then that makes me look better and like so commonly you know like oh, like, I don't get along with other girls. Like, I don't like other girls. You know, like, I'm more like one of the boys. But it's like, you don't want to, like, associate yourself with other women. And and that's, like, a really common rhetoric as well when, like, why? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, why would you not want to associate yourself with other women when, like, th- there can be people that you don't get along with and there can be, like, you know, different personality types that you don't get along with and that's perfectly fine. But that doesn't mean, like, inherently you just dislike women. And so I think that, you know, it it becomes that much more prevalent when, like, not only do we have men contributing to it, but then also women contributing to it unknowingly. And again, like, most women wouldn't identify as being misogynist, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's just... And, and I think that sometimes, you know, that misogyny comes through as, like, an act of self-preservation in a way. Because if you see someone treating another woman poorly and thinking poorly about another woman like you talk about this one girl at work all the time and whatever and you, you, she has negative connotations around her well you're not going to be you're not going to want to going to want to be the one on her side you know what I mean like that's that's where most people kind of default where like well <laughs> everyone fucking hates this chick like I don't want to be the one standing up for her and I don't want to be the one that people like relate us together and stuff like that because you also in an act of self-preservation don't want to put yourself in an even worse position Mm -hmm. like that um but anyways that aside you had like mentioned that basically like there's been a change from like how you were younger how you were when you were younger to now and so like how like what what did that look like for you in relationships well the biggest thing that we talked about too was that i dated women before that how can i say this nicely (laughs) just didn't challenge me Mm -hmm. so they're really passive and they let me kind of do what i want and they didn't pipe up about really much so for me how i'm not going to change for someone if they're not challenging me or or pointing out things that i think that actually need to be changed which again like puts the onus on women but yeah yeah i knew you were gonna say that (laughs) but i mean again like in especially in your 20s it's fucking hard like it's at least for me dealing with other issues in my life too but like i I obviously didn't have the maturity that's for sure yeah so for me to try to like change i was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants in life really so me trying to be a better person was like the last thing i was trying to do so obviously since we started dating my life i was like 30 or 29 30 you had just turned 30 i just turned 30 and just my life looks so different so then now when you're pointing stuff out um, my life's a lot slower for me to actually take a step back and like think of other people's perspectives and like i obviously want to be a better person i put more emphasis in trying to be a better person now and like make changes in my life and like evolve so i i almost feel like 
if I was dating someone different, no, I actually know the answer to that. If I was dating someone, if I was dating you in my early twenties, we would never, we would have broken up in like two weeks. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be challenged. That's why I was dating women that didn't challenge me. Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't trying to be a different person or, um, yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't looking for that at the time. So then that obviously makes it harder. This is why I feel so freaking helpless about this topic. <laughs> it's just so, how do you like change people's minds? And even like guys that I deal with in their early 20s with work or golf or whatever i see them around it's just i can tell they have that mentality just when i'm bullshitting with them and they have like this like pump out their chest kind of like (sighs) attitude so it's even more uncomfortable if you're a guy that's trying to talk to those guys yeah like me and and i it's just i feel like it might be I feel like the young guys is just like pointless because they're just going to behave the way they want to behave. And I feel like the older guys that I deal with, like in their 50s and 60s, are just so old in their ways. It's like, why do I even, like, what's the point of me even saying anything to these guys? Yeah. So I'm just trying to, like, really, like, make an effort for guys my age because I guess that's what I feel like is the easiest success rate of, like, doing something about it. Yeah. But again, it's just like. I guess our hope is teaching our kids to behave differently and then they teach their kids and then a couple hundred years, maybe it's spread around. <laughs> couple hundred. <laughs> we got a couple hundred more years of this. <laughs> um, I, I think it's worth noting too, because you said that um, like a lot of your past girlfriends were passive and stuff, which may, which may actually just be true. But like when you said just now, you were like, you know, it's, hard to call people out and it's especially hard to call them out when like they're the kind of guys that are like a little bit more like arrogant or like pompous about it and you feel that way as another male but like so you so you think i i was that guy when i was younger i mean i don't know but yeah i probably was but i think that you know when i also look back to when i was younger like in my earlier 20s and stuff like that i was less likely to call people out as well because i i just wasn't comfortable and And especially so, like, if you think that you're not comfortable now, like, imagine, like, being, you know, like, a 19-year-old or a 16-year-old mm-hmm. girl or whatever, like, trying to call people out for that as well. And and I think that, like, you know, I, I don't think that I'm a particularly passive person, but past partners of mine might feel that way. Like, they yeah. might view me as being passive because I probably was more passive towards them because I wasn't as, like, willing to stand up for myself and I was scared to and... um and and also like i didn't feel like it was going to lead to anything or i didn't even notice that i was being treated as poorly as i was like when i look back at things now i feel even more frustrated because i'm like wow like i didn't even i didn't even notice like how poorly i was being treated in that situation and how mm-hmm. much like you know i was being spoken over and all that kind of stuff and it wasn't until i started paying attention to it because you know maybe someone brought it up to me or what like someone made me aware of how much that was happening and then when you do become aware it it does it it is really depressing because you notice it everywhere like in in work and on the street and you know in dating and in friendships and in family like relationships and like all across the board like there's just so much of that that you see how differently men and women are treated um and like even when we watch impractical jokers and they go up to some girls sometimes as mm-hmm. part of it i get uncomfortable watching that thing knowing what i know now yeah impractical jokers if you guys don't watch it is like this show where they like um it's like these four guys and they try to get the other guys to like do shit that's embarrassing and say stuff that's embarrassing and stuff but they almost always are interacting with a, they well yeah they always are interacting with the public yeah and they're really good <laughs> about like I think what's good about the show is they do have kind of morals and standards still. They're not just like pranky guys trying to like make a quick buck. Yeah, like they're generally respectful. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. And he, and yeah. So in just but it's just weird in some of those situations. I know that they're just doing it for the show and they'll talk to the girls after and stuff. But it's just I instantly see what you tell me about like guys walking up to them and talking to them. Yeah. So that makes me uncomfortable watching that part. So now because you feel like you've kind of like learned quite a bit about this and stuff like that and changed your way so now where do you feel like you're at with all of this i feel like i want to start piping up more when i hear people around me talking misogynistic Mm -hmm. and 
I definitely am going to like hold myself to that moving forward because I do feel like, okay, even if I pipe up and it, they react to it negatively, I don't think they're going to still say that shit around me, which at least stops something. Well, and it's like if you start to feel uncomfortable saying something around one person, you probably will start to feel uncomfortable saying it around other people as well. Yeah. And I do think it might click something in their head like, oh, yeah, maybe this isn't the right thing to say. Like, I feel like older guys have this weird thing with their wives where, like, they complain about their wives or they'll say stupid stuff about them. And, like, it's just, I don't know. I don't even know really what to say to them about that besides, like, I just don't laugh. Yeah. It's just weird. It's just a weird environment sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's just so much easier just to laugh and play along with it. But it's just well, like I'm getting way, more and more uncomfortable in these situations. And I guess the best thing for me to do, because I'm not like passive either. It's easier for me to pipe up and say something. So I guess I should just try to make an effort. If, see, when I feel helpless in these situations, it's easy for me to be like, what's one person going to do? Mm-hmm. And just not this situation, other situations. But if one person changes another person and it multiplies so it's i guess i can just work on that for now there's a positive thing i guess i can take from this well and i do think like a positive thing as well as like you know you you do have the option of raising your kids differently and you do have the option of making them aware of things like this and correcting them while they're growing up rather than you know when they're freaking 50 on the golf course like (laughs) trying to be like hey don't talk about your wife like that you know like I, I think that that's if you're if you're raising your kids along and and again like it, there is still our society is still our society regardless and there still will be those issues happening and so I think like if you're raising kids to be aware and be conscious of those things then hopefully they will have different defaults than maybe like you or I had a couple of my friends' wives mm-hmm. um they've been dating them forever too but they are. Like, I don't want strong women, I guess you can say, that really, like, stand up for what they believe in and and they don't, I don't know what the different word for strong is because I don't want to say women who don't stand up for themselves aren't strong. But anyways, yeah. that's just my whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, but those guys never say anything, like, misogynistic. I've never once heard them say anything misogynistic. And then obviously you too has changed me as well. So it's interesting that... These, those type of women kind of create that environment. But that's what you're saying. It's on women. But I don't know. It's If anything, that kind of gives me a little bit more hope that, oh, yeah, there there are a lot of guys out there that are still like may, trying to be and are not like misogynistic. And... Well, and I think that's the thing about it. Most of it, I don't want to say most of it, but I think that, you know, there is obviously that percentage that it is just completely unconscious and it's it's people that aren't recognizing how they're contributing to these issues and you know if if at first you're like defensive about it you know over time like you just hope that those are the people that like they're defensive because they don't want to be seen that way and they don't want to behave that way and they don't want to be you know related to like being a misogynist or whatever so it's it's kind of like people usually have like one of two reactions it's like either they get defensive and then like that's where they cut it off because like they don't even want to hear it they don't even want to like acknowledge it or they like maybe get defensive but then like down the line they're like oh yeah like that's probably not like how i should be behaving or i shouldn't have said that or whatever kind of thing and then do start to like change eventually because they don't want that they don't they don't want to be that person Mm -hmm. so i think just you know those are those are the type of people we hope to raise. Yeah, I'm trying to be hopeful. <laughs> so Matt leaves this conversation more depressed. <laughs> it's just I don't know. It, it is overwhelming. Like it's it's an over. I think any time that you're um, learning about like just issues in the world, it is very overwhelming because you're like, holy fuck! Like this is so relentless like an unending where like how how do you change it and like obviously like it's continued to go on for so long for a reason and you know whatever but i but i do think a large part of that reason is because there wasn't people calling it out and yeah you know maybe where in like the 50s and stuff like that and before 
it was a lot more appropriate to be openly misogynistic. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, was it your grandma that we had? I can't remember. Or, or was it my makeup? School? It doesn't matter. Anyways, I remember going through these magazines from like the 50s and stuff like that that were for women. And um, this one article was like about like how to please your husband. And it was like when he gets home from work, like don't bother him with like your petty like <laughs> yeah. nonsense and, you know, like like let him kick his feet up, like prepare him a drink, have things ready for him to go, like, you know, have have like comfortable clothes set out for him so that he doesn't have to like all this shit, like just like completely like catering to men and being like, you shut the fuck up and you just like make your like husband's life easier. Yeah. Um. So like, you know, that was a time where it was appropriate to be more openly misogynistic obviously that isn't as appropriate now no (laughs) like and so that is where like small change does happen and it's that's true it's depressing because it is like slow going but you know those that generation is starting to die out you know yeah i guess that is a big change in 50 years or ish 70 years Oh, God. Yeah, that is 70 years. I know. I always think that, too. <laughs> Anytime, I always think it's 2000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know, as, like, older generations, because, like you said, like, I do think that there's generations that are more progressive, and the generation, like, underneath us, underneath me, I think is super progressive in a lot of ways. I think we should note that we're seven years apart, not 17, so... <laughs> not that big of a change it matters <laughs> uh, we were still in school at the same time yeah you were graduating when i was in grade five do you want to play that card school i said <laughs> <laughs> i didn't specify which one <laughs> uh, anyways um but you know like i think that there's those changes do happen and as those generations slowly die out <laughs> it's sometimes for the best because it's like that's like a larger body that has that, that agrees with that or that doesn't see it being as big of an issue. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's depressing for me right now because I would just take snippets of it in our relationship and like kind of store it and like have like a brief with you about that situation. Mm-hmm. But I haven't actually sat here and had talked for an hour about it. Yeah. Especially this week. I feel like we've talked about it like a couple of times now this week. Yeah. So I think that's why it's more overwhelming for me because it's not just like little snippets like it has been yeah so anyways and we've only just scratched the surface you didn't ask if i was ready at the beginning oh are you ready yes (laughs) looking back maybe not (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah too late now Ugh. all right usually i'm the funny one (laughs) that wasn't a funny one for me inaccurate anyways but it's fine i'm more fluffy fluffy i just feel like i'm more fun on the podcast and this one i wasn't very fun i just think it's an important conversation regardless Those debbie downers sometimes sometimes see there that's misogynistic debbie downers why isn't it donald downer and why is it lazy susan instead of lazy <laughs> steve steve these are the issues <laughs> yeah. that we need to address <laughs> we need change <laughs> someone call trudeau <laughs> okay well all right, all right. Thanks for coming on the podcast. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No problem. <laughs> so I get another uh, cameo in a year? Yep. Perfect. Ugh. All right. Now I have to get dog food and a uh, new heater because it's cold in here. Okay. We will uh, see you guys next time. Well, we won't. Matt probably won't be here. Me and Alyssa will be back in action. Yeah. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye.